Hi, my name is Hanin, and I will be doing a monologue from the play Top Girls by the character Shona. My present job at present, I have a car, I have a Porsche, I go up the M1 a lot. Burn up that M1, straight up the M1 in the fast lane to where all the clients are. Staffordshire, Yorkshire, I do a lot in Yorkshire. I'm selling electrical things like dishwashers, washing machines, stainless steel tub are a feature on the reliability of the program. After sales service, we offer a very good after sales service. Spare parts, plenty of spare parts. Oh, and fridges. I sell a lot of fridges, especially in the summer. People want to buy fridges in the summer because of the heat melting the butter and you get fed up standing the milk in a basin of cold water with a cloth over. You know, so that's the reason people don't want to do that this day and age. So I sell a lot of those. Big ones with big freezers. Big freezers. And I stay in hotels when I'm away at night. Uh, on my expense account, <laughs> I stay in various hotels. They know me, the ones that I go to. I check in, I, I have a bath. I have a shower, then I go down to the bar, I, I have a gin and tonic, I have a quick chat, you know, then I go to the dining room, have dinner, I usually have a filet steak with mushrooms, I really like mushrooms, oh, I really like smoked salmon, I usually have salad on the side, green salad, I don't like tomatoes. Hi, my name is Kemily Rotnamira and I will be performing a monologue from Laughing Wild by Christopher Durang. In this monologue, there is a woman and the woman is complaining about a certain person she had to compete against to get a can of tuna fish. It did not go well. Oh, it's all, it's all such a mess. Look at this mess. My hair is a mess. My clothes are a mess. I want to talk to you about life. It's just too difficult, isn't it? Being alive and trying to function. There are all these people to deal with. I was at the supermarket and I was trying to get a can of tuna fish. But there was this person standing right where I wanted to get the tuna fish. And I waited a while to see a big move. And they did move. I waited a while. They were also looking at the tuna fish, but they were taking a real long time with it, looking at the ingredients on each can like they were a book. Pretty boring book if you ask me, but nobody has. And so I'm waiting. I'm waiting so long. And I thought about asking, but then I had this terrible fear that it would do no good. No good at all, because this person would just, just reply to me with, We'll take however long we want to, you goddamn nagging bitch! And then what would I do? I started crying. Quietly, so as to not disturb anyone. And I'm, I'm quietly sobbing, and this person still does not grasp that all I need is my goddamn tuna fish out of there. And so, and so I just, you know, I just, I got my fist up and I just said, would you kindly move out of the way, you goddamn asshole? And the person fell to the floor and I'm quite shocked. And this kid nearby just started to cry. I was still crying and didn't even know what I was gonna do with the tuna fish anymore, so I just, I just, you know, I turned to the kid and I just said, Shut up, kid! And then I just, I just thought, I'm gonna run out of here. And then I thought, I'm gonna get a cab. I'm gonna come to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Because I need to be surrounded by culture.
I, you see, you've, um, you've hit the, 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 it's one of my little things. I, my pet, my pet hate, I suppose. That's it. Sore point. My brilliant life, famous and, and, and everything, but it's, it's an obsession. You know, the man who can think of nothing but the moon. It's like that. It's kind of, kind of like that. Only not. Here I am going, I must write. I must write. I have to get this story out, then another, then another, then another. So fast they have to come out. I have to get them to the page quickly. As soon as I've finished one, here comes another. Like, 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 bobbing again and again. I'm so related about that. I mean, I'm here with you, but my head's going. My mind's going. There's a cloud shaped like grand piano. Must remember that. Must use that somehow. Can't just see it. Can't just see it and that's it. Have to remember that. Log that. Use that. Uh, I can smell heliotropes, you know, you know, heliotropes, the flowers, and I'm going sickly sweet smell. Use that, use that, use that when describing a summer evening. Everything you say, every little phrase goes up there to be used. I can go to the theater or fish or anything, do anything without, without there being something. Already there being something new, something driving me back to the desk. It's as if I'm eating my own life. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Everyone is going, what's next? What are you working on now? And sometimes, sometimes you know Nina, it is Nina, right? Sometimes Nina, I think they're all just humoring me. I'm just a madman they're gonna pounce on in section. They are, they are. It's like when you're sick and everyone says you're fine, you're fine. And everyone is saying to me, you're wonderful, you're wonderful, but, but. Hi, my name is Chrissy Gross and today I'm gonna be performing a monologue from Dontrell Who Kissed the Sea by Nathan Allen Davies. This is a scene where um, Erica ta is talking to the protagonist, Dontrell, a bit about her family life. I've seriously never said this out loud before. Okay, my dad is my uncle. <laughs> I know, it's seriously fucked up. So fucked up. God. God, okay, so my mom cheated on my dad with his brother, and it's this huge family secret. And I didn't even find out until like a year ago, and it completely destroyed me. And the thing is, I didn't even know he existed until I was like 12. Nobody told me he existed until I found some old picture in the basement. Who's this, Mom? Oh, it's your father's brother. Oh. So yeah, eight years later, he's my dad and my uncle. I call him my dunkle, but just in my head to myself. I've never met him face to face before. Now that it's out, he calls me a lot to check up on me, which feels nice, but also really weird. Like, really weird. And I told him I was planning on moving out of my parents' place, and he just bought me this condo. Like, put it in my name and everything. My mom didn't want me to move out, but there's just no way. My name is Aileen Salashur, and I am doing a monologue from Goodbye Charles by Gabriel Davis. Oh, Charles. Hmm. I haven't seen you there. Huh. We haven't spoken for a very long time. And whose fault is that? Hmm. It's yours, Charles. It's yours. Oh, by the way, I did get the divorce papers. That's very sweet of you for sending them. Yeah, yeah. Charles, do you ever wonder what I do these days? What do I do these days? Hmm. Well, Charles, this is what I'm doing. 
here okay so if a our marriage was a joke then b our divorce cannot be serious Charles it cannot be it just can be a farce that I can have with tomato sauce Paul hmm. Paul loved me from the eighth grade okay he really loved me okay that may be a little bit creepy and he may have some boundary issues, but he really loved me, Charles. Unlike you, he has made 127 unsuccessful passes, 42 proposals, and also he has written 100 original sonnets for me, Charles. And what? I think that is very unique and I think you cannot find that everywhere and I think you and I have found that therefore I've decided that this marriage will in fact work Charles what about the others or was he the only one you hated because I loved him If they do catch up with you, I'm sure they won't. I'm sure you know what you're... If they do, well, tell them it was me. It's my fault any way you look at it. Don't stop talking to me. It wasn't his fault. You should have killed me. It's my fault you... Perhaps you're going to kill me. Is that why you've stopped talking? Shall I kill myself? I'd do that for you if you'd like. Would you like that? I'll tell you a thought. I could have killed you. But I didn't. I spared you, though you were this disgusting thing by then. Anyone in their right mind would have squashed you. But I remembered what you'd been like at the beginning. And I didn't want another one. I wanted that again because you were perfect and I loved you. You know, you asked me about when you used to shat in the night. Sometimes I was there. I'd sit and listen to you, or I'd be in no condition to hear you, I'd just be sitting. Sometimes I'd go out at night and leave you. You didn't get out of bed. Did you get out of bed? Because you were frightened of what I'd do to you, so it was all right to go out. That was just a short period you used to shout. You grew out of that. You got so you'd rather not see me. You nearly stopped speaking. Do you remember that? Not speaking, not eating, I tried to make you. He stopped believing in himself. That's it. That's why he failed. He quit. So much talent, so much potential, but he stopped believing in himself. He lost sight of himself because he didn't know what to do next in his career. And I guess all that um, stress built up and finally broke him. His music was great. I would listen to it all the time. It would get me into a pumped up emotional state. His lyrics never got old. 
No one gave him a chance, but I think in today's world that doesn't matter. He didn't give himself the chance to take control of his own career like I knew he could have. Maybe it was fear from doubting himself that crippled his ambitions. He couldn't do it anymore because he spent so long doing it with no financial gain, with no recognition of his genius, and he couldn't do it anymore. That's, that's why he hung himself in his studio. Um, what pains me the most is that I believe in the guy more than he believes in himself. He forgot the number one lesson. Doing what you love for the sake of the journey. Nothing is more rewarding than that. He lost sight of that. Hi, my name is Tammy Yu, and today I'll be doing a monologue from Goodnight Desdemona by Anne Marie MacDonald. In this monologue, I'll be playing Constance, an assistant professor who magically enters the world of Othello. Boy, Shakespeare really watered her down, eh? I wish I could be more like Desdemona. Next to her, I'm just a little limp. Her rodent, roadkill, furry tragedy all squashed and steaming on the 401 with Michelin stamped all over me. It's true, people have always made a fool of me without my even knowing. Gullible. That's me, old Connie. Good sport, big joke. <laughs> Just like that time at recess in grade five, a gang of bully girls comes up to me. Their arms are linked, they're chanting as they march. Hey, hey, get out of my way. I just got back from the IGA. I'm terrified. They pin me down and they force me to eat a dog tongue sandwich. I now know it was only ham. Oh, what would Desdemona do to Claude had she the motive and the hue for passion that I have? She would drown all queens with blood, then cleave Claude Knight's two typing fingers from his guilty hands. She'd wrap them in a box of chocolates and present them to Ramona. She'd kill him in cold blood and in blank verse, then smear these ivied walls with scarlet letters spelling the thief. I think I helped him use me. A gull, a stooge, a swine adorned with mine own pearls. A sous chef, nay, a scullery maid that slave to heat hell's kitchen with a baking stench of 40,000 scalding humble pies. Oh, vengeance! Hi, I'm Emma Janowski, and I'm going to be doing a monologue from Joseph Sokola's Scuba Lessons, and I will be playing the character of Kelly. <clears throat> did you ever wake up and know that it was going to be your day? I did. Today. First time. Yeah. I woke up five minutes before my alarm this morning. Oh, God. The sun was shining. The birds were chirping. I felt warm all over. And then I read my horoscope. Oh. <gasps> Today is going to be your day. What you dream will become real. Romance figures prominently, musical notes involved. Okay, I don't get the musical notes thing either, but that's not the point. The point is that it said that today is my day. And it has been. All day. <laughs> I got on the scale this morning and I was five pounds thinner. And that was after I got out of the shower. Yeah, my manager told me on the way to work this morning that he was gonna fix the broken door in my closet. And I reported that six months ago, okay? Normally I wouldn't believe it, because I have rotten luck. <laughs> but I've, I've had this feeling all day, so. Oh my God, that's not even the best part of my horoscope. <laughs> Romance figures prominently. <clears throat> He's not here yet. My date, Martin, my date. <laughs> yeah, actually it's a, it's a blind date. So both Dan and I have blind dates tonight, which would ordinarily scare me. Yeah, to tell you the truth, I was terrified uh, until this morning. 
Hi, I'm Nicholas Spina, and I'll be doing Todd's monologue from Pterodactyl by Nikki Silver. In the beginning, there was dinosaurs. Lots of dinosaurs. A and they were big. They were, they were very, very large. In comparison to man, they were, they were huge. A and there were many different kinds. There was the Ceratops and the Stegosauruses, and the Tyrannosaurus and the Pterodactyl. And they lived, uh, not in harmony, roaming the earth, raping, as it were, pillaging without regard. And... Um... Um... I seem to have forgotten my notes. I'm sorry. Uh, I thought I left them in my pocket. Maybe I just wasn't, wasn't supposed to wear this. Maybe I left them on the table. Maybe... It doesn't matter. I don't have them, that's the point. I think I remember most of it. Maybe I left them... It doesn't matter. Where was I? Oh, yes, it got cold. It got very, very cold. And all the dinosaurs died. They all died, at once. It got cold and then they died. And uh, the land masses shifted and arranged themselves into the pattern we now see on the map. Basically, I think. Um, there wasn't any divisions of countries or states or anything. And I'm pretty sure California looked bigger, but it resembles what's on the map. During the cold spell, which we usually refer to as the Ice Age. Or was it before the Ice Age? Or after it? I can't remember. Uh, but life began spontaneously in a lake, I think. And uh, amoebas formed and became fish, don't ask me how, which evolved into monkeys. And one day those monkeys stood erect and realized they had opposing thumbs and developed speech. Thus, mankind was born. Hi, my name is Abby Akinlade, and I'm doing a monologue by Billy from the play Harlem Duet by Janet Sears. I thought I saw them once, you know, on the subway. I had to renew my prescription and I spotted them. Him and her. From the back, I see the, the sharp barber's line separating his tightly coiled hair from the nape of his neck. His skin is soft there. And I have to kick away the memory nudging at my brain, my lips on his neck, holding him. And before me is his woman all blonde hair and blonde legs. Her weight is resting on his chest. His arm is around her. His, his thumb is resting on the gold of her hair. And he's proud. He's proud. He's not just any Negro, he's special. That's why she's with him. And she, she, she flaunts. Yes, she flaunts. They are before. I am behind and I'm stuck on the platform and my tongue is pushing really hard against the roof of my mouth because my, 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 my brain threatens to fall. Hi, my name is Maria Perry and I'll be performing a monologue from Night Mother by Marcia Norman. Jesse. How dare you? How dare you? You think you can just leave whenever you want like you're watching television here? No, you can't, Jesse. You make me feel like a fool for being alive, child, and you are so wrong. I like it here. And I will stay here until they drag me screaming.
screaming, and I mean screeching into my grave. And you're real smart to get away before then, because I mean, honey, you've never heard a noise like that in your life. Ah! Who am I talking to? You're gone already, aren't you? I'm looking right through you. I can't reach you because you're already gone. I guess you think they'll all have to talk about you now. I guess you think this will really confuse them. Oh, yes. Ever since Christmas, you've been laughing to yourself and thinking, boy, are they all in for a surprise? Well, nobody's going to be a bit surprised, sweetheart. <laughs> this is just like you. Do it the hard way. That's my girl, all right. You know who they're going to feel sorry for? Me. How about that? Not you. Me. They're going to be ashamed of you. Yes. Ashamed. My name is Carol Chen, and I will be performing a monologue from Quiet in the Land by Anne Chislett. Pa, I have to talk to you. I have to. Open the door. Open it! I've been halfway around the world, Pa, and I've come back. I have to tell you something. You're going to listen. You never listened to me in your life, did you, Pa? Well, listen now. I killed a man. Do you hear me, Pa? I killed a man! They tell me I killed more, but there was only one I ever saw. We were going up this hill, and he just came charging at me. So I stuck out my bayonet like it was my own arm, and I got him in the gut. He was just lying there, screaming and bleeding. was the war, Pa. That was it. Hello, my name is Dormin Sademirar and I will be doing a comedic monologue from the play Good Night Desdemona, Good Morning Juliet by Anne Mary MacDonald, playing the character Constance, who just found out her professor, who she has a crush on, took a job that she wanted, uh, suggested her for a much worse job, and uh, is getting married. Regina? I hate the prairies. They're flat. It's an absolute nightmare landscape of absolutes and I'm a relativist. I'll go mad. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Diamonds are harder than a bed of nails. I can't feel anything. I'm perfectly fine. I'll call the dean and resign. I'll go back to my apartment and watch the plants die and uh, let the cats copulate freely. I'll order in groceries. Eventually, I'll be evicted. I'll smell really bad and swear at people on the subway. Five years later, I'll run into Professor Knight and Ramona. They don't recognize me. I'm selling pencils. <laughs> they buy one. <laughs> Suddenly, I drop dead. <sighs> they discover my true identity. I'm awarded my doctorate posthumously. Professor Knight dedicates his complete works to me and um, Lays roses on my grave every day. 
My stone bears a simple epithet. Oh, what a noble mind is here, overthrown. There's no time to lose. I have to start now if I'm gonna sink that low in five years.